You are listening to The Real Men Feel Show with Andy Grant. Real Men Feel encourages men to allow and express all of their emotions. Despite what you may have been taught, all emotions do serve you. Real Men Feel is committed to engaging in discussions that most men aren't having, but you don't need to be a man to join us. Listen to us on podcast platforms including iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many more. You can also watch the show on YouTube by visiting realmenfeel.org slash YouTube. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or subscribe on iTunes by visiting realmenfeel.org slash iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at realmenfeel.org and at facebook.com slash realmenfeelshow. All links mentioned in each episode are in the show notes found on the blog at realmenfeel.org. Now, let's get into this week's show. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Real Men Feel. This is your host, Andy Grant. And uh, today, we're, we're, we're doing a bit of an experiment. Um, this, this, uh, this show, this, this, uh, the kind of the, the topic, the, the general vibe we're going for today was suggested by a, a listener. Um, someone contacted me, and that led to today's show. And if you know, if today's show uh, feels like any level of a success and interest, then uh, I think I'll do more of these. And kind of what I'm beating around the bush, what does this mean? <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it, we're gonna, I'm calling it a regular Joe chat, which is really came from from the suggestion of, of a listener. And uh, well, let me let me bring in our our our, our guest this week. Uh, the well, I, I, I not even jokingly, I refer to as the number one fan of the show because he first contacted me about having listened to every podcast while he drove a truck. So uh, welcome to the show, Al Fleming. Hey, Andy. Thanks for having me on. Um, it, it's really my play. And you, yeah, I think it was, it was like last year you had contacted, you sent me an email or something just saying, hey, I, you know, I drive a truck. I listen to all these shows. I, I, you know, I really get a lot out of them. I like them. And, and we discovered that you lived in Massachusetts, as, as I do. So mm-hmm. we even uh, so we got together live and, and hung out a bit and chatted. And I think then you were on a panel show, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, actually, I was on two of your panel shows. Oh, cool. So I remember you being on the, the one about the Gillette ad. Yes. What else were you on? Um, I don't remember it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was no good. Neither of us could recall it. That's how... <laughs> yeah, um, it was. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, um, I sort of remember it. There was me and uh, I think two or three other guys and we were discussing um phrases like man up and things like that okay so yep. that yep. was the other show i don't remember the title of it though cool that's fine <laughs> it's not a test <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh but what al i think it was just like a week and a half ago al sent me a message and i'm gonna read it i oh, think then. shows. i think shows with regular guys people who don't have books clients websites or ones that are not updated laughing emoji really that referring to your own site (laughs) yet still get up and keep going every day regular guys who have stories that are inspiring because they could just fade into non-existence but they just keep going that fascinates me and inspires me i just wonder why those guys yes guys like me are not highlighted not everyone's greatness includes books social media presence etc and i responded to al and i said if you're meaning real men feel you know, I can't have anyone on. I can't invite someone to the show if I don't know they exist. So, you know, that's why it's usually someone that has a book or is on social, has a following, so I can discover them. But, uh, but anyway, I said, and, you know, uh, it's, so it's that simple. That's why it doesn't happen that much. But does this mean you want to be on the show again and just, and just have a talk? And, and you said yes. And, you know, I kind of, I know I'll keep it j- joking because I don't want this pressure to feel like something, but like, but now the spotlight is on Al. And so, I said, you're going to need to bring it. <laughs> you did. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I've been uh, thinking about this, and then it was like, oh, gosh, this can either go. Well, was... <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Right as Al's going, his internet has frozen. That is interesting. So you were just saying, this can go either way, and you froze, which, again, <laughs> was perfect. <laughs> but yes, exactly. So my thought is that it could go, you know, it could be foot and mouth, or it could be, you know, something that turns out 
pretty decent. So um, I'm hoping for a pretty decent, you know, we'll see what happens. All right. So was there something top of mind for you that you wanted to address or talk about or you, you feel wasn't getting attention that, that prompted you to reach out? Well, I guess mainly it's just, you know, as I stated in my message, um, I, I do like to hear if I can find them or just people that I know or whatever that are, and I hate to use the word normal or whatever, we'll just say everyday guys, every show, um, that lead extraordinary lives. Um, on the outside, most people wouldn't, you know, see that as that, but when you really get to know them, you find out their struggles or, or what they've been through, the things that they've overcome, um, what they do on a daily basis to just keep going. Um, it, it can be inspiring, you know, um, for whatever reason, you know, maybe they just don't have the uh, ability or desire or they don't know a good ghostwriter or whatever, you know, they don't write books or, you know, do podcasts or post on social media or whatever, because, you know, to them, life is just going every day, living their life with their, you know, if they have family, with their family, you know, their friends and, and just being, you know, an extraordinary human being without having to say, hey, look at me, I'm extraordinary. And I know that's kind of like being on this podcast almost kind of defeats that. But uh, <laughs> there's a little bit of irony in that, I guess. Well, let me, for, again, from my perspective, and, and I've battled with those old, whole thoughts as I step out and decide to, to try to help people. But, you know, to be of service, to help other men, to, to share what you've gone through, you know, it, it I guess some people are like, look at me, what I've gone through. But mm. I mean, I certainly don't feel that's what I do. I don't feel that's what any of my guests are doing. And, no. and I, I do a pre-screening. I, I've talked to people and I decide not to book them. So I, mm. I, I kind of weed out someone if they just are here to try to hype something. But so, I, I mean, I invite you to see that too, that that your desire to talk and share. And I know you, you've, uh, you, you've been trying to get more active in social media. And I believe you have a website. Yeah. And it, again, observing you witnessing you it comes from from your heart it comes from trying to be of service mm -hmm. right. that's uh, exactly my goal um it's i try to you know serve myself first <laughs> by loving myself you know and um learning to like myself which seems sometimes to be a moment by moment practice mm -hmm. um and then you know whether it's through times when I get to speak with my sons because there are young adults now living their own lives, you know, and they both live in uh, Pennsylvania and um, I'm here in Massachusetts. So uh, we, you know, they're young adults, so <laughs> they do their thing and that is kind of here, you know, when they need something or whatever. But I still make sure I reach out to them and, and see how they're doing. But yeah, I just, I mean, I try to talk to them, make sure that they're good and that they know that I'm always here for them and available, you know, when they need. Um, and then I do other things like go to my groups, you know, whether it's uh, I group with the Mankind Project or uh, just people I know here and there that I just try to talk to on a regular basis and remain in contact with. And then normally my day-to-day -day is, you know, homework, sleep homework sleep rinse repeat but through that you know i try to talk to other people like people i work with and things like that and i'm not necessarily just you know oh i'm gonna find this person or we're gonna have this conversation you know just as i hear things you know as they mention things i try to stay empathetic and and attuned to what they're telling me or what they have shared or what i hear in passing and, you know so they know that there's someone else there that's in their corner uh, that listens, that hears, and that cares. So, yeah, that's my life in general. So it it sounds like it's it's again it's you said it. I'm not going out looking for someone to have some like deep powerful moment with, but your willingness, your openness to have that surface in your day to day life seems to be um, important to you. Yes, it's very much so important. Um, it's 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 my water. Um, you know, my spiritual water, so to speak. Um, we can't, you know, we can't live without water. Um, we could go 
and live for a while without food, but if we have no water, <laughs> we're just, you know, we're toast. And um, so, yeah, that's literally my spiritual water is to that connection with people. I mean, and it's, it seems odd to me sometimes because I'm an introvert. Uh, but <laughs> naturally, I really am. I stay to myself a lot. Um, I sometimes will just literally like run to my car, jump in and <laughs> drive home and then like run into the house and close the door and say, I'm done with the world for today. You know, <laughs> but at the same time, I realized that, you know, connections with other people, you know, whether it's spiritually or just sharing love um, is vital vitally important for me and my survival every day you know and i think too what also precipitated me listening to that message was you know your hiatus uh, for a little bit your improv or unintended hiatus we'll call it and um you know when i read some of your posts and i listened to that video you know i was like i felt my heart went out to you and i felt kind of like jeez you know I go through the same things, you know, and I think, you know, very similar thoughts and, and things like that, too. And, you know, part of it, too, is just to, you know, to say, you know, there are those of us out here that are willing to, you know, step up and be there to talk and just hang out to, you know, whatever, you know, um, whenever anyone's going through stuff like that. And I don't. You know, it's hard to find that sometimes, you know, and a lot of us guys, we don't really speak up about those things, you know, for various reasons. I mean, my fledgling social media presence is really because a lot of it is fear, you know. I make a post about, you know, mental health or whatever, and I'm not necessarily going through that at that time, or it's not even something I necessarily go through mental health wise. Um, but then the next thing is I got a slew of messages of, you know, oh, it's okay. And oh, I'm there for you. And it's like, dude, that's not where this was going. You know, you totally missed the point on it, you know? <laughs> so I don't want to get a lot of that. So then it's like, ah, just forget it. I won't post it because I don't, they're missing the point. And I know it, and it's a way to, it could be a way for me to start a conversation with them. And, um, I have at times, but sometimes for me, it just seems like it's more difficult in that way to start that conversation. So that's part of the reason why in my head during the week <laughs> after messaging you, I was like, oh gosh, here we go. We're going to have this conversation now and what's going to happen. But, you know, I decided to just let it go, just like I do with all the rest of my life. Just, like, just see how it goes. Just let it flow. And uh, we'll go from there. Cool. So you you said a, a number of things. I'm taking notes to to get back and ask about. But um, it, one thing I I, I want to point out for everybody who, who just who sees themselves as an introvert as you do for yourself, Hal, that being introverted doesn't mean you don't connect to people at all, right? It, it almost can be connection is more important to an introvert. You just that's don't exactly right. connect with every single person. It's not you know it's not that's not something that drives you, but it's still. It, it, again, it's needed. It's you, I think you said it's necessary to your survival. Oh, definitely. I I, I pick and choose um, very judiciously um, <laughs> who it is that you know I want to have in my life, um, especially if it's going to be someone or some or many people that are there every single day. Um, I'm really careful about that. I, it used to be when I was younger that you know it's like oh I gotta fit in and I gotta you know be out there and people gotta know me and and it was exhausting and there's just the amount of stuff spiritually and um sometimes psychically even that I would pick up um would just be so draining and um it forced me to go in the total opposite direction and then I learned you know to just keep that circle of friends real tight and real small and then I could manage it better for my own life, but manage it better too is just to be a better friend. Cool. Um, also earlier, as part of your day-to-day -day experience, you talked about how important it was to talk to your sons and let them know that, that you're, you're available for them. Mm -hmm. Is that important to you because that was not your experience as a son? Both. Uh, well, you only asked me one question, but I'll say both. Um, so when I mean when I say both, I mean yes, definitely. It's me flipping the script of uh, what I didn't get in life, and then two, because I just really like them. 
you know, <laughs> they're really cool guys, you know, and um, and I actually had to cognitively say guys instead of kids because, you know, I like to recognize that they're not kids anymore. Um, and it just, it amazes me every, every time I think about it, like, geez, I remember when you guys came out and I can literally hold you like this. And, and now I couldn't even begin to hold you, but, <laughs> but yeah, I, I like them and I wanted to flip the script. Um, I didn't get that. My father actually passed away this past month and, um, I didn't go to his funeral or anything like that. Um, one, because it was just way back in Pennsylvania and Delaware with everything that was going on. And I was going through, as you know, some of my own personal things back then. And I just wasn't able to get down there. But the other reason that I didn't go was, and this, you know what, I'm just going to say it. I don't care how it sounds. He wasn't there for me. Um, he came in and out of my life at any time, his room, at any time, when he felt like it. And so... Through the years prior to him passing away, I had already dealt with the loss of that relationship and pretty much the loss of him as a, as a man that cared for more than just himself in my life. And I went through all that process, that grieving and mourning and all that, and I just really didn't feel that it was needed to have to stand there and go through all that all over again um, for a second time, so to speak. So, yeah, I didn't go. Um, but yeah, because I didn't have that in my life, I wanted to make sure my sons had that. And it was difficult at times. I had to learn to see them as individuals. I had to learn to see them as their own people with their own brains and their own thoughts and issues and desires, you know, beyond what I desire for them to have in their life. You know? And, um, let them go and fly and do their thing, even though I could see, you know what, you're going to fall off that cliff and it's going to hurt. <laughs> but, um, you know, I had to learn how to let it happen and just be there for them, you know, when they needed me and or when they reached out and said, okay, I don't know what, what to do here. Hmm. And kind of in your, your opening statement, um, you talked about your desire to hear about the extraordinary lives that that regular guys are living and the struggles that they overcome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you want to dive into some of the some of the things that you've overcome? Uh, sure. Um, so, I can't tell you exactly how many days or anything like that, but um, it's been probably about a year and a half now that I'm sober. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you. Um, I struggled with alcohol for a long time. I mean, and there were times even when I was in, my, in the military when the weekend came from Friday evening, late afternoon, early evening, all the way till Sunday morning, I was out of my mind. Um, and then I would just, you know, sober up, go to bed or whatever, and do the work we call over again, and then it would start on the weekend, you know, just again, another cycle of wash, rinse and repeat. But um, I came to a point where it was just like, you know, this hurts. <laughs> I mean, physically it hurts. And um, even just socially and emotionally, it was detrimental or becoming detrimental to me. So, and um, I don't like to hide a lot of stuff. Um, and I found myself hiding it and hiding that part in that aspect of my life and i just got to a point where it's like you know if i can't be or i'm not willing to be open and out about this then i don't need it in my life and so um i started you know that journey of putting down a drink and, and just not not uh going to it or turning to it um as soon as anything got bad um, which was difficult, but I've been doing it, you know, yay, <laughs> I've been doing it and it's wonderful. Um, what else? I, you know, you're asking me these questions and I didn't, I should have wrote down the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, your experience is your experience. I, I find again, top of mind, the thing that's right there is fine, but yeah, I mean, yeah. what, 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 when looking, looking back on your life right now, today in this moment. You know, mm -hmm. what, what strikes you as things that you've overcome? What, what do you want to share? 
so yeah like um my being a dad too really helped with a lot of stuff like my sons you know i'm not going to say i was always great because i certainly wasn't and i don't really feel that i'm necessarily great now but i feel that i'm a whole hell of a lot better than when i first started and um i i for a long time thought i was a real crappy dad to be honest with you i mean i came out when both my boys were very very young um they were geez i think they were like two and three or three and four um, they're 19 months apart. Um, when I came out, I mean, came out as a gay man. And um, their mother and I divorced. And, um, you know, that whole journey started. And I felt like, you know, I'm going to ruin my kids' lives. You know, I'm going to do the exact thing that I didn't want to do, is, which is, you know, fuck them up for the rest of their lives and, and things like that. And, um, you know, those boys came to me different times um, on their own, not necessarily, not ever together, but they've always said it to me in different times throughout their lives that um, they were always glad that I was honest with them. And um, they never cared. They said, you know, Dad, you told us a long time ago when we were younger, you know, sometimes boys like boys and sometimes boys like girls. and vice versa and all that so you know okay whatever we grew into understanding and learning what a lot of that stuff was as we got older because they didn't really grasp a lot of it when they were kids um but they said the most important thing is is, is you never stopped loving us dad and you never left you were always there and you know you had our backs and you still have our backs and that's what's important regardless of who it is that you are or who you love or anything like that and um so that's you know really one of the main things that keeps me going is those boys because i know they're watching me and i know that they're learning from me and that they're trying to get you know inspiration and learn and just to live life and be men themselves from me and uh so yeah um that's to me is very extraordinary coming from a dad again that was in and out of my life whenever he felt like me or, um, and just really wasn't that much of a dad at all you know and then i had a stepfather who was abusive as well and um you know so my uh my models of what a dad was or what a man is supposed to be we're not always that great. Say for one, I have to say this, um, his name is Henry. He was my big brother from Big Brothers and Big Sisters. And um, I don't talk to him very much now, but I still know him. I'm 46 years old. And I met the guy when I was like eight. So, <laughs> you know, so that tells you that he was, you know, a pretty good influence in my life as well. Yeah, that, that's really neat. Because one of the questions I, I did want to ask was, you know, especially since you mentioned that Part of your goal in, in being close to your your boys are to to show them to model what it means to be a man mm-hmm. and i wanted to like well how did you learn what it means to be a man so it sounds mm-hmm. like sounds like a lot of it was from the, this the big brother organization and, and henry in particular yeah a lot of it was from him um he himself he's a very humble guy he would just look at me and say i don't know what you learned from me but <laughs> um but um yeah him and then just i had some older friends um like just you know maybe a few years older than me or whatever you know who and just some good friends too who had dads that were pretty decent to them and so when I could get past my moments of being jealous (laughs) that they had great dads um you know I could see you know okay so this dad listens you know this dad you know takes the time to spend time with his his kids you know things like that so you know that that's really what did it for me and um of course tv too because my i watched a lot of tv growing up and so i know a lot of that is idealized and (laughs) very unrealistic but you know you watch enough you can become um hopefully wise enough to be able to decipher you know what's like totally unrealistic and what's like you know okay this is good plus i watch a lot of documentaries and stuff too so yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that, the notion of the idealized, perfected, you know, show version of, of a dad and of a man. 
because I, I, I believe you mentioned that, you know, you're a lot better now than you were. You were crappy dad at times, but you still don't think that you're great. So what, what, what would a great dad, you know, really living day to day, what would a great dad look like? What, what, you know, what's that bar that you're, you're, you don't see yourself as hitting yet? Honestly, I have no clue. I just, um, I just do me, so to speak. I just, you know, I make mistakes. I'm not afraid to say I'm sorry. I'm not afraid to say I was wrong. Um, you know, I try my best to limit the amounts of times that I say, I told you so, um, or I just rephrase it in such a way that it's not so cutting. And, um, no, yeah, that's all I try to do. And if that makes me a great dad, then yeah, I'm a great dad. Um, awesome. So I, I, I would like to officially dub you a great dad because okay. you're describing it. You know, I've never been your son. I can't speak from experience. But as you describe it, as you talk about your relationships, what's important to you, you know, what you're conscious of and how mm -hmm. you speak. Yeah. I, it, 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 you know, it sounds like you kind of, uh, again, not, not trying to claim all the time or, or anything like that, but yeah, you're, you're hitting that bar. I, I just want to really mm -hmm. point that out that it's not something you're, you're still striving for you. I mean, you're, you're doing it, man. Well, you know, thank you for saying that and, um, for helping me to see that. I appreciate that. I mean, it's just, when you go, and you just do your thing, sometimes you just don't step back enough, I guess, to, to look at it and say, you know what, I guess I am doing okay. Um, but hey, my boys are still here. They've never been, you know, not to say that any kid that's ever gone through this, their parents are bad. This is not me saying it. So please don't write in to me saying that. But, um, you know, what I'm saying for me and what I look for, they've never been um, in any major trouble um you know they do their thing they make their mistakes and they learn from them you know i i, I couldn't ask for better so. yeah i mean that that's the human experience right mm -hmm. be, be willing to be wrong you know make new choices learn from when you are wrong when you when you make mistakes and and don't beat yourself up don't judge yourselves harshly um which which you know i still do that at times but the goal is to <laughs> do it less and less you know? yeah exactly Exactly. Um, and it, you mentioned, you know, uh, we talked about the just regular guy and ordinary person, regular Joe, mm -hmm. all these kind of phrases. Um, I, I, what, just again, top of mind, like, how, how would you define a regular guy, what, a regular Joe? What does that mean to you? Yeah, so that's where my hiccup started. <laughs> it's like, you know, all that's relative, right? I mean, it's all subjective and uh, relative to whatever situation you're in. I mean, everybody's a regular guy, I guess. Um, I guess when I look at it, you know, not to say that, you know, some of these people that I'm going to mention are not regular guys. Um, but, you know, I'm not out there every day with, like, my big, huge conferences and, you know, uh, thousands and millions of people, you know, downloading my stuff or, you know, paying me money to hear what it is that I want to say to them and things like that, you know, like people that I actually admire, like, you know, Tony Robbins or, you know, um, well, he's one of the main ones, really. But, you know, even uh, Dr. Aziz, uh, uh, his last name begins with a G and it's so totally, he wrote a book called Not Nice and I'm actually starting to get into it. Um, um, for you know, one of my favorite author, uh, books is The Art of Not Giving, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, you know, and I keep that in my mind daily, you know, like when I'm doing things even at work, and it's like, okay, wait, it's okay, Al, you only have this amount <laughs> of care left, <laughs> okay, so do you really want to give away some of that to this or <laughs> kind of keep it for yourself, you know, kind of thing? Um, I, I that's like, you know, to answer your question, a regular guy, I guess, you know, we all are just regular guys, regardless of what we have, um, that we give out or give away or teach or whatever, you know, we all are just regular guys. And I guess sometimes it's just when you see that, you know, those who get the spotlight or know how to keep the spotlight, you know, things like that, um, those of us who are just like, you know what, I just want to live my life every single day and be a good person. Sometimes you can you can feel a little less than, I guess, is, is where I was coming from when I wrote that message. 
Um, I, wanna sh- I, th- I think I first heard this from, from T. Harv Ecker, but, but that every master was once a disaster. And, and <laughs> Tony Robbins, yeah, he's huge global presence, uh, you know, multimillionaire, helping people, making a huge impact. But he started with, uh, you know, no one knowing who he was. And yeah, that's true. And rooms with like two people in them. You know, it, it's mm-hmm. everyone starts the same way. And, and like, I, 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 maybe there are like, I don't know if, uh, you know, if, if like Wayne Dyer's children inherit some platform and, and keep it going or something like that. But, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. I mean, everyone starts in the same place. You're, you're absolutely right. We all do. I mean, we all do. We, and that's just the way it is. You're absolutely right. Cool. Um, you, you mentioned a few uh, uh, books and things and I group. So is, is there is there one best tool, a habit, a practice, a, a program, or a book that has helped you a lot that you wanted people to know about? Mm. That's a great question. Yeah, there is one actually. Um, it's called. Well, I think there's five now, but the, the first one is the four agreements. And um, don't ask me to say I'm off the top of my head because every time I mention this book, I start to say them and then I forget them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's a great book. Um, you know, always just you know do your best, and you know, it's just one. It's wonderful, you know. And what and, and to me, like doing your best is just like whatever the best is that you can muster in that moment seriously you know if all i can do in the morning is just get up and go brush my teeth and that's my best and i did it and so great you know and then i'm gonna you know go from the next moment and maybe now i can okay i brush my teeth my mouth a little better you know maybe i can you know change my underwear you know (laughs) you know what i'm saying like it's just do what you can every moment and I love that book. I refer, I've read it like three or four times now. Um, and even though I still to this day never remember exactly each agreement in order. Um, and that's probably why I keep going back and reading it. <laughs> um, but that's one I could definitely recommend. I do typically recommend it to anyone. And then, of course, one I already mentioned is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Because I went through my life uh, for so long caring about every last little thing about what people thought about me what they were saying or maybe not saying you know um how do i look you know or my mustache hair is out of place you know i mean oh my goodness i don't know if this hair up here can do anything you know oh it's too gray i need the color you know all those different things in regards to parents and then you know i get out in the world i'm trying to find a job or whatever and it's just like uh, you know caring about every little thing and uh, was when I li- actually actually didn't read read that book. I listened to that book while I was driving truck, and <laughs> and I listened to it twice actually. And um, it was that one as well as one of the just powerful ones for me. Just to say, let it go, man. Just let it go. You know, no one cares. I mean, some people do. They're living in their own world, um, just like you're living in your own world, and just do your thing. And live your life, you know. That's that's what I got out of it. So. Cool. Yeah, and I, I I have not read uh, not giving a fuck yet. Um, I have read Four Grants many times, like you said. And mm-hmm. one of the one of the best things I took from that was sure, do your best. I've always heard that, but that it does go into the explanation of like, and your best is going to vary. Yeah. Your best today is not going to match what it was yesterday, and it might surpass it, might be less. But yes, do your best in any given moment based on your your energy, your knowledge, your inspiration. Like every all all of you. That's gonna be yeah. Bring all of you to each moment, and all of you is gonna vary. Yeah, it will. Cool. Yeah, and, uh, right. um, no, I don't want to. I don't want to force this into something you recommend. But it, you did mention that you go to an I group, which are which are men's groups run by the Mankind Project. Is is that something that has uh, brought value to your life or served you in any way? Not at all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has. Um, it, it's. I still. I mean, yeah. I so I came across the Mankind Project uh, probably about three, three and a half years ago. And um, no, actually, yeah, it was three and a half years ago. It was before I moved to Massachusetts. And um, I was going to go on a weekend in the Philadelphia area. 
and I just thought, um, it just it didn't work out for me to go on that. And so I'm not an experience where I'm not going to get too deeply into it. Um, was a little negative to me, and I, so I had a little bitterness towards the organization in general. But then I met another friend through another organization called um, Easton Mountain. And Easton Mountain is a spiritual retreat center. Um, uh, it mainly serves gay men, um, and it's in upstate New York. And um, I used to go there a lot. I've a long term volunteered there for a little bit, and, and I've, I've, I've gotten a lot from there. And actually, there's a few men there that I really look up to there, uh, and, I, and I like to hear. You know, when I have the moment or a chance to read something that they posted or to talk to them, I really cherish the time and um they i met another gentleman there and we became friends and spent you know time with each other and had dinner you know hung out went skiing and all those different things our friends did so he went on a mankind project weekend and i think it was may of 2018 and he was telling me about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I heard about that group. You know, it's okay, whatever. I don't know if I have much interest in it anymore. And blah, blah, blah. I was kind of turned off. And um, so he's like, okay, whatever. Well, you know, keep an open mind or whatever. So then some other things were going on in my life a few months later. And I was on the phone with him. And um, he goes, so, you know, there's this uh, weekend coming up soon called the New World Warrior Training Adventure through the Mankind Project. <laughs> So at this time, instead of letting myself close down, I stayed a little open and I listened to him. I got off the, actually not even, we didn't get off the phone. While I was on the phone with him, I just went to the website and said, okay, fine. I signed up for the weekend. <laughs> All right. Now stop, stop asking me about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I went in October of last year and um, I've not looked back since. And it should, it was it was just really life changing for me and uh, um, mind changing I should say I, I've really like got a chance to see things differently and, and not necessarily ruminate on things you know and just have it running around in my head but to actually just kind of think about some things and through listening to the other uh, men and their experiences and things that they would share and things like that it just really started to help me see things you know differently and to realize that i have i have the strength inside of me and i have i can do these things you know i can live this life um no matter what it looks like no matter if i'm living in a place that i don't like or you know working a job that i'm not necessarily happy with or not saying that those things are happening i'm just you know no matter what you know actually i love my job right now it's awesome but um, no you know no matter what I can do this. I can, I can live and I can be a great dad and I can just be a, a decent human being, you know? And, um, so yeah, that's, that's the mankind project for me. I still go to my eye groups. It took me a minute to find one, but I did find one and it's a great group. It's growing. It's very positive for me and my life. You know, we meet every other Saturday. Like we just met actually yesterday, past Saturday. And I love going every single time. Every time I see those guys, it's, it's like, ah, oh, it's family reunion again. It's, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Cool. Andy's thinking, I can see it. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, so I've, I've uh, you know, I, I prepared a few questions and I'm thinking like, hmm, do I want to just tackle these like rapid fire, give you kind of a, a game show vibe of just like answers off the top of your, off your head? Um, um, that probably would be... All right, let's try it. Why not? <laughs> okay, so this just first reaction based on, you know, where you are right right now in this moment. Is life easy or hard? Both. Great. Would you like to expand on that? Sure. I mean, you know, overall, most part, I would say life is easy. But um, the hard part comes in is because I've been doing a lot of stuff in my life differently than what I learned. Um, from those that were in front of me that were not necessarily great influences in my life. As I mentioned earlier, I was, you know, um, not having a dad, that wasn't the only, in my stepdad being abusive. I, 
my whole life was pretty abusive. I, and I grew up in a very uh, depressed, down and, and just difficult city that was very violent. And so um, violence was all around me, everywhere I turned, everywhere I looked. Um, so how I learned to respond and react to a lot of things that most people would respond and react to in a different way, you know, so I'm doing things differently in life. And that's hard. <laughs> you know, I'm changing my muscle memory, so to speak, and it's, it's difficult. Um, but I, it's, it's not impossible and I'm doing it. So, Awesome. Awesome. What's one thing you wish more men knew? That it is okay to have feelings and to express them. <laughs> you can be more than just angry. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Awesome. What keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night? Off the top of my head. Sometimes I just worry about if um, I'm going to see the next day because, you know, our leaders didn't, you know, decide to listen to your podcast or go to Mankind Project or do something else that would make them better people. And now the world is exploding. Is, is there anything you wish you had learned at a younger age? Self-confidence. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how to, to love myself. Um, I wish I had been taught that or learned that a lot younger. Um, I feel that sometimes I feel that my life would be a whole hell of a lot different um, if I had to learn that when I would say, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old as opposed to in my mid-30s, early 40s. Cool. Well, uh, I'm glad you learned it whenever you learned it because <laughs> that does make life uh, feel better and allow – again, you you – you naturally want to be of service and help people and connect with people. And if, if, if we don't love ourselves, that is almost impossible, right? You, you yes. can't share something you don't have. Yes. I mean, as one of, uh, one of the great, I don't know what to call him, her, um, not necessarily a mentor, but just someone that I do admire, uh, RuPaul, says it often you know if you can't love yourself how the hell are you gonna love somebody else um well the first time i i ever heard that and especially coming from rue i i at first it was like oh it's just so you know cliche it's just such a you know whatever um but then it started sinking in you know and, and it's true you know the love that you pour out to others really starts from the love that you give to yourself you, you can't work on an empty vessel it's just it just can't happen so. yeah totally agree totally agree what are you proud of i'm proud of a lot of stuff i'm proud of my boys um you know some people will say oh my kid's just great whatever scholar or athlete or you know my kids are just great dudes, period. My sons are just great dudes, and they're growing into to be awesome men. And, and I couldn't ask for more. You know, they, my one, my oldest son, you know, he's been uh, in a relationship with his girlfriend for like, I think about three years now or so. Um, and they're still going strong, and I can really see, you know, their connection and how great that is, you know. Um, my youngest son, you know, he's still doing, you know, his thing, learning here and there, little struggles or whatever, but he still learns from everything. You know, he dropped out of high school um, twice. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to say that, you know, I was proud of that, but what I can say is, you know, he was 18 when he did it, so he was an adult, and that's his choice. Um, was it a choice that I would have made or that I liked? No, but it was his choice. And he's still doing it, though. He's, you know, getting himself back in another, like a small community college because he's with his mom right now. He's living with her to 
get his GED, and you know, so he still has his goals, and he can see what it takes to reach those goals, and um, he's striving to go for those. And so I couldn't ask for better. You know, high school wasn't his thing. He didn't like it. He didn't want to continue with it. Okay, great. But he does see the importance of having at least his GED and um, going and, and, and keeping going and not giving up. And so hey, that's awesome. So I'm proud of that. I'm proud of both of them. You know. I'm proud of myself, you know, because I could easily, you know, said, you know, screw it to everything, wash my hands of it all, and, you know, could have tried a little harder to succeed at not being here the many times that I've attempted that, you know. Um, I didn't, you know, and then finally I decided to say to myself, I just don't want that to be an option anymore, you know, and... You know, yeah, I do still have some thoughts where it's not necessary that I want to actively do myself in, you know, but, you know, I think like, oh, well, what if I was just walking down the street and whatever, you know, um, but I don't dwell on those things anymore. It's literally just a day to day. Like when those do come up, I stop it and I say, you know what, that's not helpful and that's not going to really get you anywhere in life. Um, whether that's just continuing in a good relationship with your partner or, you know, just being there for your fellow warrior brothers or literally just being a good employee. Sometimes I have to break it down even to that, you know, it's like, it's just not going to help. These thoughts are not going to help that. So I'm proud that I'm able to recognize those things, you know, I'm able to be a little bit more aware of where I am emotionally and, and where I am, you know, even spiritually sometimes, you know, just to say, okay, I need to stop and breathe. Okay. We can move on, you know? So yeah, that's what I'm proud of. Awesome. Awesome. That's a, that's a lot of good stuff. What are you looking forward to? Um, That's a great question. Cause I don't, I mean, I have lots of little things, you know, to every day, you know, like I'm looking forward to finding a place that, because uh, right now where I live, it's, it's, I rent, uh, in a space, you know, so I'm looking forward to finding a, a place that's more me, um, my own, you know, <laughs> I come home and it's just me, you know, or just me and my partner and that's it, nothing else, you know, or me and my partner and a dog, I don't know. Um, <laughs> looking for, you know, I just look forward every day to see what the next day is going to bring me. And um, that's it, you know, and I take it moment by moment and and try not to look too far forward. Um, And I definitely try not to look too far back, you know, because I can't do that. You know, I don't even drive with my rearview mirror. I learned that from being a truck driver. They don't have rearview mirrors. Um, well, the side ones, but they don't have one in the middle is what I'm saying. Yeah. And in my car, I'll flip it up. Why? Because I find that many times when I'm driving and I'm supposed to be going forward, I'm looking in that mirror and I'm looking behind me. And then I'm not looking at what's in front of me, you know? And now i got to slam on brakes because that person in front of me is just, you know, slam on theirs, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I just like, you know, I got those side mirrors. I can see a lot and I've got them adjusted in such a way that I can see more than the way most people adjust their mirrors. And I know that because I used to be in LA for a car dealership. So I know how people adjust their mirrors, <laughs> you know? But yeah, I just look, I look forward to what each one is going to bring. And finally, is, is there anything else you want to share? Um, yeah. You know, anyone that listens to your show or watches uh, the videos or whatever that, you know, they may have that thought, like I had, you know, the precipitated this conversation. Um, yeah, you know, you were right. And, and I thank you for reminding me of that. Everyone starts somewhere. And maybe it's not our path or um to be the next greatest you know or whatever you know the world wants to put on that um but you can be great for yourself and you can definitely be great for those who are closest to you and that's where it really matters
Here's awesome. the, yeah, I like this. Yeah, yeah. You can be the world's greatest Al Fleming. <laughs> yeah. I am the yeah. only one. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I'm not the only only one. There are other people, but you know what I'm saying. So. Yeah, cool. Um, so, is there? Do you want to share a way that people, if they want to connect with you, to see what you're up to? And um, again, being a regular guy, is is there any sort of a uh, uh, social trail? Is there anything public that you do want to uh, to share with people? Sure. I mean, I have two Instagram accounts. Um, one is just like for my everyday, you know, just stuff and the other is for like all oh, my like whenever i get a little inspirational thoughts that i think of or i have things that i want to share so the first one is my regular ones always be free and that's without the second a and always and i emphasize that because the other one is not me so it's a l w y s b e f r e and then um my other one that i and that's on twitter as well got to be consistent and then the other one is Al speak up and so yeah it's a play on my name um because typically i'm uh naturally i'm a soft-spoken guy um and so that's a-l-s-p-e-a-k-u-p and it's again both on instagram and twitter okay yeah awesome and if anyone if you're if you're listening and driving or anything like that these, these will be in the show notes we'll have links to a to connect with Al, uh, if you want to follow what he's up to and uh, and read about him speaking up more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, another thing I'd like to say, you know, don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid of, um, you know, if you have to divert your direction, it's okay sometimes, you know. You've gone on a path and you're like, oh, this is just not. Why keep beating your head up against a brick wall, you know, or, or trying to, you know, beat down something that's just not going to go away, you know, change your direction. That's okay. It changes your perspective on things. It helps you see things a little differently. And um, it helps you learn more and be a better person. So, yeah, do that. Awesome. Um, Al, I think your suggestion in this show was uh, has been a great success. I hope you feel that way. Um, You know, if you're judging it as a success, Andy, because this is definitely your realm, um, hey, it's wonderful, and I'm glad you're happy with it. No, I th um, so yeah, if 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 you're a self-described regular guy, and and you have a uh, you know your experience, your story, if you, that you don't you don't feel it's getting heard, there's there's no one interested yet, you feel the urge to share it, um, reach out to me. And, and, you know, we'll do more shows like this. So, uh, yeah, if, uh, you know, you're, you're Tony Robbins just starting out or you have no interest in being any of those things, you never want to write a book, you never want to do anything. But, but, but again, you, you, you feel called to share something that you've gone through. I would be honored to talk to you about being on the show. Yeah. I mean, thank you for the opportunity, Andy. Um, I would like to say it's not that I don't have an interest in writing a book. <laughs> I do. Um, but right now, it's just not. It's not my priority, you know. And that's where I'm at with it. Um, yeah, but um, and it, it might not ever come to be, and that's okay. I'm okay with that, as long as I just I I want to be happy in life, and as long as I continue to do that and continue just to be the loving person that I am naturally, then I'm a success, and that's all it matters. Beautiful, I love it. Great, great summation. Um, so th thanks again, Al. Thanks, thanks for speaking up initially. Thanks for speaking up here. Um, wherever you're listening to us, watching us, uh, please leave a comment, a share, a like. Uh, let more men and women know that real men feel. And regular Joes have plenty to share. <laughs> All right. Thank so uh, reach out to me via email. Visit realmenfeel.org. Check us out on Facebook. Send me a message any way you choose to. Uh, we love feedback and guest ideas. And we'll talk to you again soon. Be good to yourself. Thank you for listening to Real Men Feel. Reach out to us at realmenfeel at gmail.com. Learn more about Andy Grant at theandygrant.com. Until next time, visit realmenfeel.org or the Real Men Feel Facebook group and share what you thought of this episode. Please give this podcast a review on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you are discovering Real Men Feel.